Hey everyone. So just coming on live to talk about how to handle negative energy. This is something that I speak with with my clients on a regular basis and I teach them just quick little tools on how to handle and deal with negative energy either as it's happening or afterwards or all of the above. And yes, this is a really complex thing. And as humans, we like to make things a lot more complicated than it needs to be. A lot of things are involved here, a lot of emotions that happen. And we're not always the nice ones either, right? Like we might be dealing with negative energy, but we might have been negative in the past too. So when it comes to dealing with it, it takes a whole lot of self-awareness. So if you are in the moment with something, and if someone is being really negative towards you, you can say things like, so for example, recently I had an issue with someone come up and they were literally screaming in my face. So in that moment, even though I was highly actively charged, I was really, really, you know, charged up by this. I was wanting to go into fight mode, you name it. But what I understood was their projection of pain. So in that moment, I was able to pause for myself for a moment, take a nice deep breath and say, I understand that you're extremely mad right now. And I would like to take some time away, take a pause to think about things because I cannot let you speak to me in that manner. It's okay to be mad. It's not okay to speak to me that way. And then distance yourself if needed. Sometimes it's enough for people to be like, oh, <laughs> you know, I'm probably not behaving or acting in my highest at this point. I'm really angry about something and, you know, I'm not delivering that in the way that I would like. But for some people, it shifts more into blame, right? They get even more angry and more upset and they want you to take the responsibility for how they are feeling. So of course, in those situations, if you need to leave, please do if you can, right? If you need to get out of that situation, they're not respecting you or your boundaries. Please get out of the situation, get, make sure you're safe, all of that, right? But if you can, just really being in that moment and if you're being triggered by what it is that they're doing that's really negative, then you need to spend some time in that emotion that's being triggered right? Because sometimes you might say things like, well, I'm always their scapegoat, right? And if you know the meaning of the scapegoat is where someone takes the responsibility for everything that's been projected onto them, right? Anything bad that goes wrong, someone projects that onto that person and makes it their responsibility. So in that case of being a scapegoat, there's usually some sort of emotional counterpart, some sort of wound that that person might have where this is actually landing and affecting them, right? So when we think of what that emotion is, and for me, when I went through this, it was the emotion of isolation, which is just a part of sadness, right? So being that scapegoat, I fell into this pattern of sadness and isolation because I didn't know what else to do. I had to just accept what was being projected onto me in order to be accepted or valued even though I was being treated like garbage. <laughs> and it's crazy what our subconscious does, especially when we're young, like what emotions we hold on to in relation to that. So for me, it was isolation and then victimization, being someone's scapegoat. So for a long time, I repeated these patterns and victimization is just the fear of being mistreated, a fear of cruel treatment, right? And a lot of times, yeah, we have been victimized, right? We have been in that state, but that doesn't mean that we're always a victim. But unfortunately, and especially with what I've gone through in life, that's how I perceive things from a subconscious point of view. It wasn't something that I was consciously doing, right? And it's not something that any of us would consciously do, nor would we want to do that if we understood that's what we were doing. So when I realized that I had this underlying massive fear about being mistreated by others, then I had to work on that wound. I actually had to feel it. And most of the time when we get into that uncomfortable emotion, we freak out, <laughs> right? We run or we want to fight it or, you know, we fawn. There's so many survival responses, or all four really, that we go into and there's some hybrids. But that aside, we have to understand in that moment when we're really uncomfortable, that's when we need to lean in the most. And that's where most people suppress, run, fight or something else. They distract themselves. 
And distractions are okay as long as it's healthy distractions. But often what comes up when we have these emotions is that we distract ourselves with Netflix or we distract ourselves with food or we distract ourselves with literally anything else than actually feeling that emotion. And that's what suppresses it over time. And it's okay if you're triggered in survival mode to go do like ice water on the face or an ice pack on your neck or go for a quick walk just to clear your mind with the intention that you're coming back to that emotion. And if you never come back to that emotion, then that's how it gets suppressed, right? We look at these things as distractions for suppression instead of time and space to clear ourselves and then come back to it, right? So it's good to even set reminders. Even if it's at the end of your day, every day, just going over what emotions came up during that time, what you dealt with, and really process it at the end of your day before bed and do some grounding. So dealing with negative energy, I don't see it as positive negatives as much anymore. What I see it as anything that is outside of me that I'm not liking, then it's really showing me something inside of me that also needs to change. So if I'm noticing patterns of how people are treating me and I don't like it, then I need to ask myself, where am I treating myself this way? And it's if you're an extrovert, it would be opposite, right? Where am I treating others in this manner? But since I'm an introvert, it's the reverse. So when I figure that out, I can start to understand where I've been giving my power. Negative energy affects us most when we feel on some level that we are powerless, right? And it's because we give them all that power over us and how we feel. And when we really anchor into we are responsible for how we feel, <laughs> we are responsible for our emotions and our reactions. No, we're not responsible for people being abusive to us. And we can hold accountability to where it is due, but also understanding what our wounds and triggers are. Because once you start to resolve them, you can be in the face of someone trying to project their opinion or belief onto you and you can just look at them with love and say not for me right that's not for me that's not okay and doing that with love without going into that extreme like wanting to fight and rip off their head type thing or wanting to completely run and escape it 100% right and this is where you can get to but it's understanding the wounds that are underneath so just as a recap when you are in a position where you're viewing something as negative and it's really bothering you, one, pause and breathe. Regulate yourself as needed. But then two, go into the emotion that you're feeling and wear in the body. Give yourself time to actually be in that emotion. It will release, I promise you. Emotions are not going to stay active for the rest of your life in your system when you give them time and space. The longest I've seen an emotion take for me personally has been about a couple hours when it's at its fullest height. I might have to revisit it a couple of times because there's layers of experience under what I'm working with. But as a general rule, it maybe will take an hour or two at the absolute most. It will start to dissipate and you'll feel that, right? But feel the emotion and then afterwards, if you want to go into the logically processing and understanding why this has happened and your earliest memories of this occurring and working with that, then you absolutely can. But I encourage you that when you're dealing with your emotions at first, don't go into logically processing them in the moment because that's another distraction, a sneaky one, but it is. We can logically think our way out of anything, but not a feeling our emotions, okay? So wait till after you felt it and it's dissipated for you to go through that cycle of understanding where it's coming from, understanding why, those sorts of things. The third thing would be to set boundaries. Once you've worked on that, you can say things like, in that situation where I was being screamed at in my face, I could say, it's fine if you're angry about something. It is completely fine if you're angry at me, but you cannot speak to me in that way. So what can we do to deescalate this? What is the solution here? What can we do to talk about what it is that's bothering you, but in a respectful way for us both and find solutions that suit us both? This is a part of boundary work. 
And I've been talking about this for years with my clients on speaking this way. It's also called nonviolent communication. So if you want to look that up, you can. It's also in the file section here, actually, under NBC. And it'll give you a flow sheet of how to address scenarios that are really hurtful without blaming and projecting that onto another person. And this is hard work. This work isn't for everyone. I wish it was. I wish everyone would do this work. But just the nature of what we're doing here. A lot of people on this planet are still mostly unconscious. And that's okay. It's not a judgment. We do have more people now than we have in a long time who is doing this work and making the possibilities happen, which is fantastic. But just realize there are a lot of people who are unconscious, who are not feeling their emotions, that are not doing the work. And it's up to you with what you do with that in those situations. I'm in this phase of trying so hard to practice empathy and compassion for everyone. I can see people's pain points and why they're doing what they're doing without making it acceptable for how they treat me. You can see them and understand and do all of that. But if they're not treating you appropriately, that's where boundaries, loving boundaries come into place, right? And you're not trying to change them. You're just saying how you're treating me, I'm not okay with. This is how I would love to be loved. It's not an electric fence, guys. <laughs> We're not out there cutting people out and trying to push them away. The more that you can work with this stuff and not run from it or just get into automatic fight mode around it. And obviously it's okay. All emotions are welcome, but it is necessary to actually work with these things. Otherwise, if you don't, what's going to happen is that you're going to keep seeing the same loops, the same patterns, maybe different people, different faces, different places, but literally the same thing over and over and over until you really address what's in here around it. It is so important to do. A lot of us have mother wounds, father wounds, family wounds, friendship wounds, sister wounds, you know, God wounds, all the wounds. They're there. So it is important to start addressing them. And please make sure you do have support as you do though, but catch your blame and judgment because that's where we get into separation consciousness is where we think it's us against the world, right? Or everyone against each other, or there's no unity. We have to make that space available. And when we do, it's up to the other person to choose it or not. So if they don't choose it, don't be like, oh, Cassandra, this doesn't work. <laughs> no, you're giving them an opportunity and a choice to elevate themselves or not. And if they choose not to, but you're on that path of growth, excellent, good. This is people weeding themselves out and it will happen. Crumbling will happen. And that's what most people are afraid of, but you have to really detach from that outcome. You have to detach from being so connected to something in that way and know that things can fall apart at times and it will have to. Sometimes it absolutely has to so that it can come back if it's meant to, if repair is available to happen. So if nothing is happening and conversations are going nowhere and you've started distancing yourself, then that is fantastic too. It's hard and I feel you. It hurts. I've gone through this so much in my life, not just with friends, but with family even, you know, so I get the pain that's underneath it. But truly what's on the other end and what I want to share with you about the vision of this is that when you do this and when you go through the crumbling and when you go through the weeding, you actually create the strongest bonds in your life, the strongest connections, the strongest relationships, the strongest friendships, the strongest business dynamics, right? You have people all around you that's loving and supportive, but it takes time. And sometimes you might be like, oh, what's the point? I don't have anyone in my life now. You know, I'd much rather go back to that drama cycle than be alone right now. But truly, I've been there. And that's why I speak to this, because I was that person. <laughs> and I didn't think it would be possible to be surrounded by all these amazing, loving, powerful people. But here I am today with like the strongest and best friend group that is so aligned to me and obviously them too. And we're able to repair, we're able to communicate. And there isn't that crazy pattern repeating of drama and enmeshment and all the things that I've experienced throughout my life. So it is possible. It just takes time. And the more that you commit yourself to having those loving connections and supportive and mutual reciprocation and value and respect, it's going to happen. You just have to keep reminding yourself, this is why you're 
facing the hardest and most uncomfortable situations. And I've gone through this even recently. I had to face a conversation. I think it was back in June, July, maybe late July. But I honestly, I wanted to run. I didn't want to go. <laughs> I almost canceled like five, six times. And once I actually got there and just faced and owned up to what was my responsibility, it actually opened the conversation for so much more healing. And the other person was able to do the same. And we were able to share where we felt we were coming up short, where we were hurt by the other person. And we we're both able to listen without being like, ah, I'm a terrible person. I feel like, ah. You know, I hate myself. <laughs> there was none of that. It was just pure love. And it was really uncomfortable. But the cool thing was we took breaks. We took breaks. We had food. You know, we did all the things that we needed to in order to have that type of conversation. And truly, this is what changes the game, you guys. Being able to do stuff like this and face things without going into, will you do this? Will you do that? And just adding to the blame cycle. My gosh, nobody wins when we're in our defense system like that. And I get it because <laughs> I've had so many situations in my life growing up where that was the norm, right? So I understand. I truly do, which is why I'm sharing this with you. So I want to know if you guys have done anything like this in your life and how it's panned out long term, not short term, because sometimes short term, there's that rupture, right? <laughs> there's all that craziness that can happen. But please let me know if you've done this and what has helped. For me, the other thing that I've done, once I've done all these good physical 3D stuff, I actually do some energy work around it too. And one of my favorite things to do, you guys, is to, when I've worked through my stuff with this person and I'm going to have a conversation, I visualize a blue infinity symbol coming from my heart and throat, expanding out to the other person. And just thinking of that love and compassion before I ever enter into that conversation. Even if I'm not going into a physical one, even if I'm just working through my stuff, I still do that. I still send them love. And I, I've done that to people that have like highly abused me in many ways, right? And I've disconnected. I've lovingly removed cords from my system and sent them back to the people that they belong to. So on the energetic scale, this is another thing you can do is do that cord removal process. Please don't cut cords. Like if it resonates with you, great do whatever is right for you. But for me personally, cutting cords means you're leaving the root. The wound is not addressed. Nothing is addressed. <laughs> and when anything enters your energy field, when it's coming from another person, there is a root in you. So there is something in you that needs to, one, remove it safely, but also understand where it landed and why. What in you believe that projection to be true? And often consciously we say, well, I don't believe that at all. But if you really just sat with it and just asked yourself, what is true in this for me? We have the emotions, but there might also be a little belief in there too, right? Around not being good enough, around having to be the good partner, the good daughter, the good son, the good husband, right? So in that we abandon ourselves. So it's really important to understand removing those cords with love, sending them back. Okay. So important. So thank you for joining on this. And if you have any questions about it, please let me know, but add in the comments, what you've done that have worked for you. If there's other styles that have been great, I would love for everyone to hear it because it's so important when we come together to figure it out. And I love the energetics. So if you would like some assistance in the energetics, let me know. But I also have my cord removal technique as well if you're ever interested. And that is $30 and it's about an hour of your time. And it's something you have lifetime access to. And it shows you how to do that. But also remember that with other people projecting and you removing stuff, you've also projected onto people in your life too, okay? <laughs> None of us have come unscathed in this life. So remember as you're removing cords, maybe to unplug the cords that you've sent out as well, right? And it's all just beautiful learning. I know it's really hard and it might sound like, wow, you're naive, <laughs> but trust me, I've been abused, I've been stalked, I've been so many things, and I'm still, sorry, there's a plane. There's a plane, if you can hear it. <laughs> it's distracting for me. 
but I've been through all of these things just to come around the other side, right? And I know people are in pain. And that's why I try to send as much love as I can while also taking care of me and my mental health and not making it a blame thing. Just knowing like, hey, this is not my value. This is not my thing and I am not accepting it. So if we can't work through it, okay, what is going on with that plane? <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> so hopefully this is valuable to you. Hopefully you've learned something. If so, drop what you've learned in the comments. Always love to hear from you guys and your perspectives. And if you have questions, then absolutely I'll do a live on all of your questions and address them all too, because this is my favorite thing to talk about because I've been in so many negative scenarios in my life, so many negative circles, so much drama, so much chaos. So I get what it's like to have to transmute and alchemize that. It's not for the faint of heart, trust me, it takes so much courage. So if you're here doing it, oh my God, I love you so much for being here and for being so brave and so courageous. I know at times it'll feel like, I don't wanna do this anymore, I don't wanna be here. I get it, I've been there many times over, but you're here and you're doing it with so much courage, so much bravery. So allow that to come to the surface and to keep guiding you towards your ultimate goal. Okay, it was so fun chatting with you guys. I love you all and we'll chat again soon.